Hello and thank you for joining us on the Pigskin Preview. Alongside head coach of the Western Illinois football team, Mark Hendrickson, I'm Andrew Bacon. Last weekend, the Leathernecks took on the Indianapolis Hounds. Coach, as you know, the Hounds are D2 school. However, they're one of the best D2 schools in the nation, and it showed Saturday as it took all four quarters for the Leathernecks to get the win. Well, we knew coming into the ball game, it would it'd be a four-quarter game. Um, they, they have a big, strong physical offense, even defensive line, uh, which is what we saw on tape, and it proved true. And then they have an outstanding quarterback. And fortunately, our, our defense rose that occasion, as we'll see with today's highlights. All right, let's go ahead and get into the highlights now. All right, so first quarter, we're going to start out here with the Leathernecks with the ball as we see Colton Ray with the seven-yard pickup as we take a replay here. We ran Carlton on the first play to the right. That's behind uh, big number 67, right tackle Jimmy Holschlag and right guard 55, Max Dancer. The next play, we threw a quick pass right out to number 87, Freddie Solomon. And, and, and Freddie's a, an outstanding ball player for us. He's just, of course, been with us for these two games as, as a transfer player. Uh, but we're going to get him the ball more and more. And as we see here, Colton Ray with the nine-yard gain. And then and there, Carlton went off the right side behind Jeff Lindsay and Brandon De La Cruz. Unfortunately, it's going to be a loss for yard, but it's the only time the Leathernecks lost any yardage on any runs during the game. And as we see here, Justin Morgan with the or Charles Chestnut, excuse me, with the great pickup for 16. Big third down conversion right here. Josh Hudson throws a strike to Charles Chestnut on the slant for a first down. And then here it's going to go right back to Colton Ray, and he's going to get another good gain of six yards. That was a productive play for us all day, a sweep to the left or to the right. We pulled our offensive center, number 52, Andrew Abisky, did a great job pulling on that. A quick pass out to the right to Charles Chestnut just for a couple of yards. And we really wanted to make this defense stay spread out early in the game. We came right back with our, our naked, faking the ball to the left, rolling to the right. Um, Josh hit uh, Mason Howington there for a big play. And, uh, and then a penalty ensued, and, and we ended up with, with a first down in the red zone. A play action pass, but Josh Hudson, you know, did what he does very well. He used his feet and scored from about 15 yards out right here. And did not find an open receiver, saw a seam. Great block there um, by Taylor Hill, a freshman tight end force, made an outstanding block to help Josh get in the end zone. That's right. <clears throat> That's right, Coach. And on the next play, we're going to go ahead and go back to the Leathernecks' next position. However, the Hounds would get a field goal to make it a 7-3 game. And as we see here, Hudson once again using his feet and getting four yards on the play. You know, second and six, that's a good situation to be, be in. Anytime that Josh can pick up four yards or more, it's, it's, it's a good thing for him to bring it down. And, uh, and right there, we ran right up to get again with Nico Watson now and uh, for a first down. And that was his first carry of the game, and it's going to go right back to Nico on this next play, and he's going to get 11 yards, and that's another first down. A great job there by Nico, and, and blocking for Nico Watson is number 39, Larry Harris. They're both freshman force. I'm sorry, Nico, now a true sophomore, and Larry Harris, a, a redshirt freshman, and they're both from Rock Island High School. As we see here, Justin Morgan with a great catch showing his athletic ability, and that would be his only catch of the game. That was Justin's only catch. It was a big one to keep this drive alive. Another great throw by Josh. We came right back with, with, with a pass down the sideline again to Freddie Solomon, number 87. Good strike by Josh. He had to put it over the corner and underneath the safety and, and hit Freddie right in that hole. As you said, that was a great throw and a great catch by Solomon. And now Hudson's going to go ahead and go back to, or continue with the passing attack and get it to Chestnut on the one-yard line. Yes, we, we, we had a crossing route here. Very good job by the defense on this play. The cornerback to hang with Charles and pull him down on, on the one-yard one line there. All right, then on the next play, you're on one. Might as well give it to Nico Watson with his huge body and just he gets right in there. Yes, and there again you see uh, Larry Harris, number 39, right out in front. Right there they are together. The Rock Island teammates with Nico scoring right, be right behind Larry again, just as they did in high school. All right, and then now we're going to go ahead and go to the second quarter. Under 13 to go, Indianapolis is going to have the ball, and it's a 14-3 game. And right here it's Fletcher for the, for the Hounds, who he had a great game. He had amassed over 100 yards by the end of the game. And then here we have Chris Mills getting it to Williams. However, Kevin Kinsel with the great play. Good reaction by Kevin Kinsel. He's a real good outside linebacker for us. Very good pass break up there. Now it's Martinez Davids on the pass coverage. And then here another run by Fletcher getting a couple more yards, a four. And then once again, it's going to go back to him. He's going to get five more yards. And, and on this series, they, they did drive the ball on us. Um, 
you know, there's no doubt this, this was, you could say, a frustrating moment in, in the ball game for, for our defense, and, and yet the defense came up big, you know, throughout the course of the day to help secure the victory. As you said, they would have four turnovers in the game, and that's great for the defense to be able to create turnovers like that. And as we continue to see, the Hounds will keep moving the ball up here and there. Another great run, and I believe that is Matt Ripp who got nine yards in the play. They stayed well balanced on this drive between the run and the pass, and, uh, and they were successful in doing that. Um, you know, and of course, once they, they get down to the red zone here, that's when we certainly need to tighten up and, and not allow a score. Um, but we'll see here in, in, in a few more plays. They did get in, into the end zone on this drive. Um, from this point on, the defense was outstanding. That was Corsaro with the Wildcat formation, and now it's right back to the regular run game as Rip gets two more yards on the play. And then Mills is going to go ahead and find Johnson for 12 yards and get the first as he's within the five-yard line. And Mills, again, is the preseason uh, first-team All-American quarterback for, for all of Division II. He is an outstanding player. Um, runs the offense very well and obviously throws the ball well. As and, th and there they do get in for, for their touchdown. And the Leathernecks would go on to kick a field goal at the end of the second quarter to make it a 17-10 game. Stay tuned after the break we'll review the second half. This is the Pigskin Preview. And now another adventure with Savings Man. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, savings man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. For others. It may have just been a summer job, but for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescuman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today, and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. is the color that your skin was meant to be, no longer beautiful. Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults, and one person dies from melanoma every hour. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. A double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. We had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. I'm a big believer in the power of we. We got each other, and that's a lot. 
We can tackle the tough challenges we face and build community through service and volunteering. We gotta hold on to what we got. It's time for you to raise your hand. Go to serve.gov and get involved in something you believe in. How will you raise your hand when they call your name? Are you with me? We weren't born. Welcome back to the Pigskin Preview. Coach, going in the locker room up seven, what did you say to the team? Well, we were ahead by seven points and we felt like we needed to improve in all areas of the game. We need to play better defensively and offensively in the kicking game. Um, all those units had had good moments during that first half, but we hadn't been as consistent as we wanted to be. And so we challenged the team, let's play better this second half. All right, well, let's see how the team would respond and get those highlights rolling. All right, here we have second half Indianapolis with the ball, and it's right back to the run game, which they had a good game, as I said, on the ground. And it's just Fletcher for a, a yard for, or a carry for a yard. And then Mills is going to complete the pass to Greg Johnson, but Davis with a huge hit, Coach. Good pop here by Martinez Davis. And, of course, this was the second play of the, of the second half. It helped set the tone. It got our bench excited. It was a good, clean hit, and, and that, was a, that was a real positive reaction there by Martinez on the quick throw. As you said, the defense is going to get fired up from here as Fletcher only gets three yards, and then again they're going to give him the ball, and he's only going to get two yards on this play. The defense really was responding in the second half, and they've responded on this drive, as we will continue to see. And then on this next play, Mill is going to find Williams for nine yards. Great tackle there. Not letting him break through. And then here Mills is looking for someone, however he's going to throw it, a little missed throw, and it's going to go to Martinez Davis for the interception. You know, there's a great job by Martinez of being in the right place at the right time. As simple as that sounds, he was carrying out his responsibilities. The ball's just overthrown on, to the running back, and Martinez is there to make the, to make the interception, and a 49-yard touchdown return for Martinez. All right, let's go ahead and get into the fourth quarter now, and as we see Mills, he's going to throw the ball. It's intercepted by Antoine Ford. A great pick there by him, and as we said, there would be four turnovers in the game, four interceptions. Yeah, great job by the secondary overall. We'll see the, all those highlights at the end of the show. Antoine Ford right there doing a great job at corner for us with that interception. Um, took us down, uh, you know, in good territory. The offense came up short, but we, we will see here in a minute that Patrick Smith is going to make a big field goal to give us that 10-point lead. As you said, Nico Watson here is just going to keep running up the middle, getting time to dwindle down a little bit and get Pat Smith in a better position to kick the field goal as Nico Watson continues to get a couple yards, and he has yet to lose a yard on the season, Coach. It's hard to bring Nico down in the backfield. You may hit him in the backfield, but it's tough to bring him down. And, and of course, in the fourth quarter, everybody's a little bit tired on that field, and that makes it tougher to bring down a 250-pound back. All right, and here's the field goal. We're going to take a quick replay here. And Pat Smith, he's been great this, this, thus far this season. He's yet to miss a field goal. And the Leathernecks would go on to win, Coach, 27-17. to 17. And that's a great showing for the Leathernecks. Really good to get them off 2-0 and and then get ready for the game against Iowa State. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the box score here. Josh Hudson would finish 14 for 20, 141 yards, and a rushing touchdown, as we saw. Colton Ray had 99 yards, almost 100 yards there. Nico Watson had 70 yards and the touchdown. Fredson Solomon led the receivers with six receptions, 57 yards. Martinez Davis, as we said, had a big defensive night as he had three tackles, two interceptions, and then one interception for a touchdown. And then J.J. Raffleson led the defense with 12 tackles. Now let's go in the headset with Coach. And Coach, we have a couple of the key turnovers for the Leathernecks to break down for you. Okay. And the first turnover we're going to see here is going to be the first one by Martinez Davis. Their quarterback boots to, to, to our right side from the defensive point of view. Um, tried to hit a receiver on his run. Of course, he's a right-handed quarterback running to his left. And as you'll see here, um, it's a quick shot of it here. But Martinez actually makes an outstanding catch on this ball. The ball was a little bit behind Martinez. He made a great catch. If he was a receiver, that had been a good catch. And, and then, of course, here's Martinez with interception number two. A 49-yard uh, return for the touchdown really, you know, helped help set the te tempo in our favor from that point on. And like you said, Coach, that's great, and it was very key for the Leathernecks to get this turnover. Yeah, it was it was a it was a turning point in the ball game, and uh, you know, again, Martinez played well overall, as did all the cornerbacks, and we're about to see here Antoine Ford, another corner for us with his interception and, and a good long return down the boundary. That's what we want those 
those uh, corners to return or anybody on defense that, that, that picks up an interception, we want them to head to the boundary and head down that boundary. And that's what Antoine Ford did right here. Ford, a wide receiver in high school, really showing his catching ability there. And then here it's going to be Kieran James, the senior captain for the Leathernecks, to get this pick. And this is their final attempt to, to stay in the game and get downfield and score. And, and a senior captain for us, another cornerback, Kieran James, really wrapped up the ball game here with this final interception. And it was four on the day for the defense. Um, um, three, three quarterbacks shared four interceptions. A great day for the secondary. All right, we're now going to take another short break, but stay tuned. Up next, we'll hear from Andrew Robisky, Colton Ray, and Josh Hudson, as well as preview the game this weekend against the Iowa State Cyclones. You're watching the Pigskin Preview. found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, savings man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. For others. It may have just been a summer job, but for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescueman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today, and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Welcome back to the Pigskin Preview. Earlier this week, I got a chance to talk with Andrew Robisky, Colton Ray, and Josh Hudson. Obviously, football is football no matter where, where you're at. All the schemes are sort of the same, it's just different terminology. But um, just having our, all the new coaches on offense, uh, younger guys, a lot of intensity, bringing a lot of uh, enthusiasm to practice really helps us out on offense. It's been very good. Uh, you know, we got a new strength conditioning coach. Uh, he's, he's really good with uh, increasing speed and balance. Um, you know, we just worked real hard. Uh, we implemented a new program, and that's, that's really uh, helped us out. It's been pretty good. It was, it was, it was a smooth transition. Um, still kind of getting used to the way Coach Warehouse plays, but um, as you can see from the past two games, it's been pretty successful, so I'm, I'm happy with it. With Coach Kiwan Ware becoming the new offensive coordinator for the Leathernecks, they have switched from a no-huddle offense to a huddle offense. Definitely being a huddle this year rather than being in a no-huddle offense last year. Um, I like being a huddle. I think. Uh, the offense has more an idea of what we need to get executed at that time. Everyone seems to be more on the same page in the huddle. 
and we're able to control the clock a lot more this year than we did last year. I think it's definitely a power, uh, more power-oriented offense. Um, we're, we, we're, we huddle now um, versus Coach uh, Roos' offense where we run an ambush. Um, it's definitely more high power, and I think it's very productive. One thing I noticed, Coach Roos definitely likes to spread it out a little bit more. But um, I mean, playing online, I have no problem running blocking, so it's all it's all good with me. But um, like, like I said, I mean, it's 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 had its uh, pluses and, and pluses and minuses. But at the same time, I mean. Like I said, we've been winning games, so you can't really complain. The Leathernecks offense feels confident as currently is 2-0 and and has been averaging over 20 points per game. I think the offense line has played really well, uh, run blocking and pass blocking. You know, our running backs played well, our receivers you know, made some great plays, and I think we just need to keep our offense in a position to always succeed and get our offense in the best spot to win, and that's what the whole thing is about. I think the team did very good. Uh, we're coming along great. Um, you know, uh, we're getting more discipline every game. Uh, we're getting more tuned, and I think uh, we could be great down the, down the road. I felt good, like I said. I mean, I feel like the team's coming together. I felt like uh, there was a good step from game one to game two, and um, I feel like we need to keep moving in the right direction. Even though the Leathernecks are 2-0, and they still see room for improvement. Um, I, th I think we did well on the team is, you know, control the clock and, and win the turnover battles um, and the time possession battle, things of those nature. Things that we need to improve on is definitely you know just executing. Uh, we had more penalties than we wanted the first two games, and obviously two turnovers in two games we won one zero. So it's things of that nature. We just need to work on executing on our part and taking what the defense gives us. We could definitely get better uh, discipline-wise. I mean, every team get better every every week. Uh, we could definitely get smarter. We could play faster, and I think that we could uh, we're coming along good. I think focus. I think focus, and I think people don't people uh, we don't need to relax. I don't think just because we're 2-0 now is the time to like to relax and, and, and sit back. I feel like we need to keep going in. Uh, I guess with a full head of steam. This year, senior Andrew Robisky was elected captain by his teammates over the off season. It's an honor. It's, it's truly an honor. I mean, I feel blessed that these guys um, look up to me enough to decide me, uh, choose me as captain, nominate me as captain, and I feel, um, I feel, I feel blessed. With Coach Kiwan Ware becoming the new offensive coordinator, what have we seen different from last year? Well, in, in the big picture, our offensive package has remained very similar to what we did last year. Um, of course, a, a big change is we now huddle up. Um, you know, we, we, we have won the, the possession battle in the first two games. We've controlled the ball, and that's always a goal, is for our offense to stay on the field and eat up the clock, keep our defense off the field. And, uh, and, and through a balanced attack between the run and the pass, you know, Coach Ware has done a great job with, with, with winning the time of possession battle. The Cyclones are a D1 class single A team and are in the Big 12 Conference. So, Coach, what can you tell us about them? Well, this, this Friday afternoon, we do take off for Ames, Iowa. Um, kickoff is, is Saturday night at 7 p.m. Um, against the Iowa State Cyclones. They're in the Big 12 Conference. Um, Iowa State is 2-0 this year. They, they defeated Tulsa in Game 1. Uh, they traveled to Iowa City this past Saturday and defeated the Iowa Hawkeyes, which would certainly be their, be their big rival matchup. Um, so they have a very, very good football team this year. And, and I know a lot of the fans remember Iowa State from, from last season. When, when they upset Oklahoma State, and uh, that was Oklahoma State's only loss for the entire season. We're going to take another quick break, but stay tuned because up next we'll take a look at the Missouri Valley Conference thus far. At what age is the color that your skin was meant to be no longer beautiful? Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults, and one person dies from melanoma every hour. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at SpotSkinCancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. A double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. I had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. 
Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. I'm a big believer in the power of we. We got each other, and that's a lot. We can tackle the tough challenges we face and build community through service and volunteering. We got to hold on to what we got. It's time for you to raise your hand. Go to serve.gov and get involved in something you believe in. How will you raise your hand when they call your name? Are you with me? We weren't born. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. Look, honey, the neighbors just bought a big screen TV. Hey, I just got a bonus at work. Maybe we should get one, too. Hold on there. Savings Man. Using your bonus to secure your future by paying down debt or saving is a better way to go. Well, I declare you're right, Savings Man. Stay ahead by choosing to save. And don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. But their name is Johnson. <laughs> For more tips and tools, visit choosetosave.org today. Just one more inning, Grandma! Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Welcome back. Here are the scores of the Missouri Valley teams from last weekend. Youngstown State crushed Valparaiso 59 to nothing. You and I would do the same thing in Central State as they won 59 to nothing. Illinois State beat Eastern Michigan 31 to 14. Indiana State beat Quincy 41 to nothing. Southern Illinois lost to Miami, Ohio 30 to 14. South Dakota beat Colgate 31 to 21. South Dakota State beat Southeastern Louisiana 31 to 14. North Dakota State beat Colorado State 22-7. Missouri State lost to Louisville 35-7. And as we said, Coach Western would beat Indianapolis 27-17. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standings. And there are still four teams that remain unbeaten. North Dakota State, Illinois State, Youngstown, and as we said, Western picked up its second one as they're all tied for first. And then the teams that are 500 right now are South Dakota State, South Dakota, Indiana State, and you and I. And then the teams that have yet to get a win so far are Southern Illinois and Missouri State. Let's go ahead and preview next weekend's games. As we see, Missouri State will play Murray, Street, Murray State. SIU will go against SEMO. South Dakota State will play UC Davis. Illinois State will play Eastern Illinois. Indiana State will play Drake. Youngstown will go against Albany. You and I will go to Iowa. And then South Dakota and North Dakota State each have a bye week. And as we said, Western will play Iowa State this weekend. All right, that's all the time we have for you this week on the Pigskin Preview. For head coach Mark Hendrickson, I'm Andrew Bacon. Thanks for watching.